Thanks for joining us this evening on TKO8 Local News. Newton County Sheriff Keith Slape said a potentially tragic event ended without injury in a hostage situation involving children Monday night in the Compton area. Slape says 25-year-old Evan Clark Valines was arrested following the incident, now faces charges including terroristic threatening. According to Slape, a woman called to report Valines had threatened to kill her and reported he fired a gun in her direction. She was able to escape the residence and call authorities, but Valines remained in the house with two children ages one and three and threatened them as well. Responding deputies approached the house when Valines allegedly ran across the yard brandishing a gun and tried to go back in the house where the children were located, but deputies were able to take Valines into custody before he made it back inside. Deputies then checked the house where they found both children uninjured but scared. Belines was taken to the Newton County Jail where he remains in custody as of news time. 24-year-old Dylan Patrick Stanham of Yellville has been taken into custody on felony theft charges regarding three stolen kayaks from a dock on Lake North Fork in August. Stanham's arrest is the result of a joint investigation with the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission, the Enforcement Division, and the Marion County Sheriff's Department. Stanham faces three felony counts of altering or changing a, boating, a boat identification number along with felony theft of property. According to the investigators, the kayaks had originally been stolen from a dock by Nathan Scott Bellama and taken across the lake to be picked up at a later time. Bellama faces two charges of felony theft of property or changing a boating identification number. Both Statham and Bellama are scheduled to appear in Baxter County Circuit Court to answer those charges. In an emotion-packed session of Baxter County Circuit Court Wednesday, Jonathan Snow of Mountain Home was sentenced to 41 years in prison on charges stemming from the infliction of of severe injuries to his then three-week-old son, Alasis. The uh, jury was out for about an hour and a half before returning with the guilty verdict on first-degree battery and endangering the welfare of a minor charges and about the same length of time on reaching sentencing recommendations. A hush fell over the courtroom at one point as the small boy Alicia Snow was brought in briefly for jurors to see the results of injuries the boy sustained and the handicaps he will live with for the remainder of his life due to those injuries. The boy was carried into the courtroom by his foster mother who has cared for him since he was released from the Arkansas Children's Hospital in April of last year. The foster mother told the court the small boy could not talk, was unable to walk, could only briefly hold his head up and was fed through a tube. Snow was remanded into custody of the Baxter County Sheriff's Office awaiting transportation to the state prison system. The Green Forest City Council were recently given an update from architect Josh Siebert on the new City Hall slash Police Department construction project. He says his firm is still trying to parse some expenses off of the $2.4 million cost and thinks they have it down to around $2.1 million. Mayor Charlie Reese said he had heard negative comments from some residents about the cost but emphasizes the building will be both a city hall and offices along with a police department. Siebert told the city that they signed the construction agreement and that construction could begin within the next few weeks. When Harrison City Council committees meet tonight, citizens interested in replacing former Alderman David Wilson are set to appear. Wilson was in his first term as the alderman when the council voted to hire him to fill the position of the city's first ever information technology department head. Wilson formally resigned from the council in September. Mayor Dan Sherrill said the council will elect a new alderman in open session during a regular meeting. However, he did say that Alderman could go into executive session to discuss the candidates, but the vote would be in public. Going before the council tonight to share their reasons why they would like to be on the council are Steve Davis, 
John Oath, Mark Garner, Chris Paul, and Johnny Savage. Stay with us. Be back in a moment. We'll take a, le- take a look at some headline news from around the region as TK08 News continues. Join Sammy Klein Thursdays and Fridays during the TK08 local newscast for this week's closing livestock market report. Made possible by Quality Feed Grains of Harrison and Belfont. Quality Feed Grains has you covered. Everything for cattle, pets, deer, equine, poultry, seed and spray, show feed, and garden. Check their website, qualityfeedgrains.com, now for this month's special. Quality Feed Grains of Harrison and Belfont. Proud sponsors of the Livestock Report with Sammy Klein on Harrison's broadcast station, TKO Channel 8. Many things have changed over the years, and so has auto body repair. Even though Ozark Auto Body has been in business for over 30 years, they continue to change with the times. They believe protecting the environment is important and have done so by using environmentally friendly waterborne paint from PPG. This aligns with the technology used by original manufacturers and gives you a lifetime limited warranty. Quality PPG waterborne paint, ASC certified personnel, plus 24-hour towing service. Ozark Auto Body in Harrison, always taking pride in excellence. Toyota trucks like the Tundra and Tacoma can take you pretty much anywhere. They can take you here, that place, way over there, even through this. But on game day, they take you to the most important place there is, the tailgate party. Right now, qualified buyers get 0% APR for 60 months plus a $2,000 special edition bonus on a new 2017 Tundra special edition. Toyota, let's go places. Federal prosecutors say an indictment accuses dozens of people in West Central Arkansas with drug and gun crimes, including members of a white supremacy group. U.S. Attorney Cody Hyland said Wednesday there are 70 defendants in state and federal courts, including 27 people picked up Wednesday morning. A federal indictment handed up uh, October 3rd was unsealed after the roundup. According to the prosecutors, over the past two years, agents made 59 controlled purchases of methamphetamine and seized more than 25 pounds of meth, in addition to 69 guns and $70,000 in drug proceeds. Among federal, 44 federal defendants are nine who are uh, avowed as white supremacists, including eight in the New Aaron Empire and one in the White Aaron resistance. Prosecutors said the organization started as a prison gang. Arkansas prosecutors have dropped a murder charge against a former death row inmate after courts ruled they couldn't use incriminating statements the man had made in a police interview. Ricky Dale Newman had told jurors he killed 46-year-old Maria Chalette at a transient camp near Van Buren in February of 2001. Arkansas Supreme Court in 2014 overturned Newman's conviction, citing his mental defects, and last month rejected an attempt by prosecutors to use the police interview in a new trial. Special Prosecutor Ron Fields said that without the confession, there was insufficient evidence against Newman. On Wednesday, Judge Gary Cattrall granted Fields' request to drop that case. Newman's lawyer says the police took advantage of the man's poor mental health despite him saying he couldn't remember killing the woman. Human remains found in the Pine Bluff area last month have been identified as those of a man last seen seven months ago. Pine Bluff police said 39-year-old William Hobson was last seen March 15th at a spot about 11 miles from where the skeletal skeletal remains were found on September 27th. The state crime lab used the man's clothing, belongings, and records of surgical implants to determine the remains of Hopkins. It still isn't known how Hopkins died. Police say there are no signs of trauma. At the time Hopkins was last seen, police say he had, he had been homeless, but that he had a family in the Whitehall area. 
The American Red Cross says it no longer will be taking blood donations from central Arkansas starting next year, but will continue providing services to other parts of the state. The Red Cross says it plans to transfer its Little Rock and Russellville-based blood collection centers to the Arkansas Blood Institute by January 1. The nonprofit says 44 of its employees in central Arkansas will be losing their jobs, though 43 will be offered equivalent jobs with the Arkansas Blood Institute. Officials say the change makes sense because the Red Cross no longer provides blood to any central Arkansas trauma center. A gun rights advocate who once declared her uh, firing reins Muslim-free says she's exploring challenging Arkansas governor in the state's Republican primary next year. Jane Morgan says she's forming an exploratory committee and will travel around Arkansas as she considers whether or not to run against Republican Governor Asa Hutchison next year. Hutchison announced in May that he was seeking a second term in that office. Morgan owns the Gun Cave Indoor Shooting Range in Hot Springs and frequently appears on cable television as a commentator. In 2014, she announced that she would ban Muslims from her gun range. Earlier this year, she criticized legislation Hutchison approved that exempted college sporting events from laws expanding where concealed guns were allowed. No Democrats have announced a bid to unseat Hutchison at this time. Before we take a look at the weather forecast, as we move on through the work week, here's the way the stock market ended today. Another cool morning here in the Ozarks, a foggy start early this morning in some parts of the viewing area. Got down to 43 degrees overnight and a little bit cooler in the valleys and especially down along the Buffalo River as it always does. But nice afternoon, 79 degrees with mostly sunny skies out there. A little shift in the wind as it moved to the south, southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. So you could feel the southerly flow rather than that north wind we put up with last couple of days. Certainly cool things down a lot. But we are in the middle part of October, so it should be cooler. But a warm-up is going to take place for a couple of days and then back cooling again and maybe a little bit of rain by the end of the weekend. Here's the way it looks for tomorrow. It's going to be a much warmer day on Friday than even today as temperatures in the afternoon expected to reach around 87 degrees. Moving into Saturday, summer-like temperatures, lots of sunshine and 89 degrees. Another frontal system to the north expected to move into the natural state on Sunday morning. Drop the temperatures down in the afternoon to 65 degrees and about 40% chance we might get some rainfall fall out of it. That's not a big chance, but better than nothing. Kicking off the work week, uh, cooler temperatures, 68 degrees under sunny skies on Monday, up to 74 degrees on Tuesday with mostly sunny skies. Great weather to get outside. I haven't seen much turning of the leaves yet, but if we keep these cool nights coming in, we'll start to see some color changes. Just had not got cold enough yet, I guess, to let that sap run down in those trees, but look forward to the color change here in the Ozark. Stay with us, baby. I can a moment. We'll take a look at sports from around the region as TKO8 News continues. A hint of autumn is in the air, and the staff at Sisters Flower and Gift Shop invite you to stop in and browse their selection of new fall and holiday gift ideas. Check out their expanded line of baby and toddler clothes, sleepwear, toy items, and accessories. For you Razorback fans, Sisters has a good selection of mugs, trays, banners, and carry bags. From fall and holiday floral arrangements, unique centerpieces, colorful wall decor, or exquisite serving pieces, and accessories. Sisters has just the right item for any occasion. Sisters Flower and Gift Shop. We are so much more than flowers. Find nearest bakery. Showing nearby bakeries. Find party supply store near here. The 2018 Corolla, loaded with the latest tech and Toyota Safety Sense standard. I got it all. Where's my mom? 
She wasn't on the list. Right now, get $2,000 customer cash. Our qualified buyers get 0% APR financing for 72 months on a stylish new 2017 Corolla. Toyota, let's go places. Many things have changed over the years, and so has Auto Body Repair. Even though Ozark Auto Body has been in business for over 30 years, they continue to change with the times. They believe protecting the environment is important and have done so by using environmentally friendly waterborne paint from PPG. This aligns with the technology used by original manufacturers and gives you a lifetime limited warranty. Quality PPG waterborne paint, ASC certified personnel, plus 24 hour towing service. Ozark Auto Body in Harrison, always taking pride in excellence. I'm Randall. I work at the on site lab at Dental Creations on the Square at Harrison. Working with Dr. Wanda is great. She's taught me a lot and showed me a lot, and she gives us the freedom to get one-on-one with the patient. If there's a problem, we can actually come out of the back and do what's best for the patient. Having this on-site lab here with the doctors, that's really nice. Dental Creations on the Square in Harrison, next to the Big Red Boot. State has dismissed internment Wilcock, a member of the Big 12 all-freshman team a year ago from its women's basketball program for repeated violations of team rules. Wilcock appeared in 31 games last year, helping the Wildcats beat Drake in the first round of the NCAA tournament before losing to Stanford. The six foot four forward from Scarborough's Canada averaged six points, five rebounds in 19 minutes of play and was expected to be a key piece of this year's ball club. Alabama, Georgia, Auburn are all separating themselves in the SEC. They're doing it even though the Crimson Tide's offense looks to be methodical at times. The Bulldogs are playing a freshman quarterback, and the Tigers can have trouble moving the ball quite often. The one thing observers say that the trio does well in a uh, week out is play defense. Their defensive squads are among the best in the nation, and it has then posed to make a run for the college football playoffs this fall, uh, in the next few months, actually. 22 ranked teams will play this weekend, and no one game features two of them. That doesn't happen very often, especially when the conference play kicks into gear. And last time there was a weekend after September with no games matching ranked teams was November back in 2009. The best matchup includes number 6 TCU at Kansas State and number 11 Miami against Georgia Tech. Tomas Martinez scored in the 63rd minute, and his free kick in the 77th led to an own goal in helping the Houston Dynamo beat the Sporting Kansas City 22-1. Houston has now moved within one point of a third-place tie with Portland and Seattle. Second-place Sporting KC needed at least a draw to secure a playoff spot. And Senator Uh, Claire McCaskill has asked the Department of Homeland Security to give full consideration to the St. Louis Cardinals' request for certification that would give the team certain legal protections in the event of a terrorist attack at Bush Stadium. The Cardinals are seeking certification under the Safety Act, which encourages organizations to implement anti-terrorism measures by providing protection against lawsuits should a site be targeted in a terrorist attack. Well, that wraps up our broadcast here for this evening. Thanks for joining us. Join us Monday through Friday at 6.30 and again at 10 p.m. as we continue to bring you local news, weather, sports, and local announcements from around the area on Harrison's broadcast station, TKO Channel 8. Now stay tuned for more local events 